Marcus was a senior in college and living off campus in his own apartment. He was an introverted young man who some would call a nerd. He had a full academic scholarship. Marcus used money from his student fund, which his parents had saved his entire life, to pay for off-campus living expenses. Having a roommate also gave him some financial breathing room, even though he technically didn't have to work. He had a well-paying, part-time technical job. He worked from home and was planning to join the company full-time after graduation. Marcus's previous roommate warned him late that he would not be returning to school, causing Marcus to become confused. He told some people that he had an extra bedroom to rent in a nice apartment complex, and rumors began to spread. A friend of a friend told Miranda that Marcus was renting out a room. She graduated last year and was living with her boyfriend, but they had a nasty breakup after she caught him cheating. Miranda was devastated and heartbroken as she thought she had met the love of her life, her soulmate, and they even had conversations about maybe getting married someday. The apartment lease was in her boyfriend's name and she needed somewhere to live, just like before. Miranda was told that Marcus was a nice guy, a real introvert and a little quirky, so she didn't have to worry about moving in with a guy who would try to get her into bed. She could trust him as a gentleman without the risk of any emotional turmoil. She didn't want to move in with a male roommate, especially one she'd never met before, but she was desperate and reached out to Marcus to meet him. Marcus wasn't sure if he wanted to live with a girl. While it may sound nice, he always felt awkward around women, and his ideal roommate was a man with similar interests. Out of courtesy to his friend, Marcus agreed to at least meet with Miranda. When Miranda arrived at the apartment, both she and Marcus were nervous. She felt like she was at a job interview and had to make a good first impression. He was always nervous around women and had difficulty striking up conversations with them. Miranda hoped and prayed that the apartment was as nice as she had heard and was still available. When Marcus opened the door, he saw the absolutely charming Miranda, about 170 centimeters tall, with beautiful dark blue eyes and sandy blonde hair. She had a girl-next-door look. She was wearing a sweatshirt, jeans, and sandals, and her weight seemed to be in proportion to her height. Miranda's beauty made Marcus even more nervous. Miranda's first impression of Marcus is exactly what she expected, as he is a little over 180 centimeters tall, has brown hair, brown eyes, is thin, and wears glasses. He wasn't the big, athletic type that Miranda usually liked, which made her feel more comfortable. This saved her from having to deal with romantic issues so soon after a bad breakup. Hello, I'm Miranda. Hello, I'm Marcus. Hello, Mark. Nice to meet you. My name is Marcus. Oh, sorry about that. Nice to meet you, Marcus. Miranda wanted to kick herself for starting their meeting by calling him by the wrong name. Marcus invited her in and they started chatting while he showed her around the apartment. The apartment was immaculate, and it was obvious that Marcus was obsessed with cleanliness. It bothered her because she could be a little sloppy, but she told herself that she could change if she had to. The apartment was in a newer complex near the university and was built with students in mind. It had a decent-sized kitchen with a small dining area and an island separating it from the living room. Marcus had a big screen TV and a work area off to the side where he did his work. The living room also had access to the balcony. The second bedroom was large with plenty of closets and a view of campus. She liked it, but she still wasn't sure about Marcus. After touring the apartment, they sat in the living room and talked to each other. Miranda explained her situation and the need to find housing quickly. She said she had plenty saved in the bank to pay her share of the rent and any security deposit he wanted. Miranda worked at a local bank in their IT department, doing technical support, but didn't write code like Marcus, but they had something in common. Other than that, the two of them didn't have much in common. They talked for about 45 minutes, and then there was an awkward silence. Miranda could see that Marcus was considering his decision. He didn't have to give her an answer right away, but other potential male roommates didn't seem to be a good fit for him. Miranda looked at Marcus with the sad eyes of her best puppy, and he made a decision he hoped he wouldn't regret. When do you want to move? Really? Oh, thank you. Thank you. You won't regret this, I promise. 
Can I move in tomorrow? I don't have many things. Mostly these are my clothes. I think tomorrow will be fine. Marcus gave Miranda her own intercom code, and she electronically transferred her share of the rent and security deposit, so there was no doubt that Marcus would be paid. She hugged Marcus tightly on the way out, which made him feel awkward, but that was just his anxiety taking over for a moment. He was not used to holding a beautiful woman in his arms and feeling her breasts pressed against his chest. When Marcus texted his best friend Alex, his friend couldn't believe his roommate was moving in the next day. He said that he was so lucky and that maybe Marcus would even be able to have sex with her. Marcus said that was unlikely, considering she was so pretty and clearly out of his league. However, he was intrigued by the idea of having a woman living with him. Perhaps she had a friend who would find him attractive. Then he hoped that he had made the right decision. The next day, Saturday, Miranda started moving around mid-morning. She was wearing a sports bra and denim shorts. Marcus's attention was immediately drawn to her breasts, bare stomach, curvy ass, and sculpted legs. Her friend Barb helped her along with a couple of male friends who brought her bed and a couple of dressers. Marcus couldn't believe how many clothes Miranda brought. He was stunned by the number of boxes of shoes she had. He fought off a panic attack when Miranda started asking where to put her things in the bathroom. She had more personal care items than he had ever seen outside of a store. He began to wonder if he had made a mistake by allowing the woman to move in with him, but now it was too late. She corrected the situation by saying that she would keep most of it in her room until she needed it. Alex happened to drop by the apartment when Miranda was moving and even helped carry a couple of boxes for her. Alex told Marcus how lucky he was to have a beautiful roommate, but Marcus told him to calm down. Nothing should have happened. Alex also appreciated Barb. Barb wasn't as attractive as Miranda, but she didn't look bad either. She had smaller breasts and a less curvy ass, so Alex suggested that Marcus also get to know her better. Marcus began to get annoyed with Alex and told him to stop acting like an immature teenager. He got a new roommate and nothing more. After everyone had left mid-afternoon, Miranda took the time to tidy up her room and get to know Marcus better. They admitted how strange it was to live together after just one meeting, but Miranda promised that they would work out. They talked about their morning schedule of going to the bathroom, grocery shopping, and inviting friends over, among other things. Miranda could tell Marcus was a bit obsessive and did her best to reassure him that she was trying not to disrupt his lifestyle too much. The conversation helped Marcus relax, but he was still uneasy about the presence of a new person in his apartment. Miranda was a very pleasant young lady with a heartwarming smile, a goofy laugh, and gorgeous eyes. Marcus couldn't understand how someone could cheat on her. He also tried not to stare at her slender bare legs and round ass. He was even attracted to her perfectly manicured fingers with red nail polish. Marcus even thought that having a roommate might make him more comfortable around the opposite sex. His discomfort around women and lack of self-confidence always made him reluctant to engage in conversation with them. The only thing Miranda liked about Marcus was his awkwardness, because it made him seem genuine and not some fake guy with fake bravado that she had dated in the past. She also took comfort in the fact that he had no intention of trying to get her into his bed. He may be strange, but he was a good guy and a gentleman. Marcus was also handsome, if you forget about his clothing style and thick glasses. He may have been thoughtful, shy, and had a dry sense of humor, but overall, he was a good guy. After a long day of getting settled, Miranda asked Marcus if he wanted to go out for dinner and drinks at a local sports bar a couple blocks away, but he declined. It's not that he didn't want to go. This was due to the fact that he was a social introvert, and his instinct was not to socialize with anyone other than a couple of close friends. He knew he had to change, but it was difficult for him. Marcus really wanted to go, but his anxiety got in the way. Miranda felt his deep, enormous desire to go somewhere with her and pressed him a couple of times. If you don't come to dinner with me, what are you planning to do? I don't know. Heat up something in the microwave and play video games online with friends. Oh my God, Marcus, it's Saturday night. We're not going on a date. It's just two hungry people having dinner. I'll tell you what, we'll go out to dinner, and I promise I'll get you home in time to play video games. 
You were so good to me by letting me move in with you that I even bought you dinner. So now you have no excuses. Marcus's anxiety peaked, but Miranda gave him a pleading look from her sad eyes, and he reluctantly agreed. It was a small victory for both of them. Miranda changed into a black V-neck T-shirt and a denim miniskirt. She went braless because she had been moving and unpacking all day and wanted to feel comfortable. Her skirt wasn't that short, but it still showed off her long, slender legs, and she wore sandals. Miranda wore no makeup and wore her hair tied back in a ponytail. Marcus was wearing his usual button-up shirt and jeans. Before dinner, Marcus was quite tense, but after drinking the beer, he relaxed and began to talk more casually with Miranda. They talked about their past relationships and what went wrong. Marcus was in a long-term relationship of nine months, which ended when his girlfriend broke it off to date other people. It hurt him, and he felt less confident than before. He admitted to being shy in front of women. Miranda promised to help him with this. She told Marcus about her relationship and how she thought they would get married when she caught her boyfriend cheating. She was devastated and told Marcus that she wouldn't date for a while because she had trust issues and always seemed to think of Mr. Wrong rather than Mr. Right. I can't imagine anyone cheating on you, Miranda. You're so beautiful. Why would he do this? Thanks for the compliment. That was nice of you, and I can't answer your question. I'm trying to figure this out myself. They also talked about what they'd like to do with their future careers, their crazy families, and random topics. They got along so well that they ended up drinking a few beers and enjoying each other's company. For Marcus, this was a real breakthrough. He'd tried his best not to stare at Miranda's breasts all evening, but they stuck out so much due to the cool air conditioning in the restaurant that it was hard for him not to stare. Miranda knew he was staring at her unencumbered breasts, but she decided he was harmless and she was pleased to get the attention of a man, albeit a nerd, but it was safe fun. When they returned home, Miranda went straight to bed. It was a very stressful couple of days between finding a place to live, packing, moving, and saying a final emotional goodbye to my ex-boyfriend. She thanked Marcus again for renting her a room, and kissed him on the cheek before heading to her room. He watched her walk away, admiring her long legs and her twitching ass in her miniskirt. Marcus went to his room and pleased himself, thinking about his new roommate in a short skirt and with her breasts sticking out through her top. When he finished, he thought that living with a roommate might be more difficult than he first thought, but for reasons he couldn't imagine. Miranda spent Sunday getting ready and grocery shopping, while Marcus went to a friend's house and returned shortly before dinner. They ended up cooking together, and after dinner, Marcus went to his workstation to study, while Miranda got ready for work the next day. Marcus became distracted by seeing Miranda painting her nails, and found it difficult to concentrate on his studies when she started painting her toenails. He had a little foot fetish that he kept secret, and seeing his roommate paint her toenails was a roommate advantage he never thought about. Miranda noticed that Marcus glanced at her from time to time and even asked if something was wrong, but he told her that everything was fine. He continued to look at Miranda's long, slender legs and bare feet, trying to concentrate on his studies. The next morning, Miranda was getting ready for work when Marcus came out of his bedroom. He saw her dressed in a business suit with a white blouse. He noticed her bra under her blouse and her skirt above the knee. What especially caught his attention were her pantyhose-covered legs. The tights had a slight sheen to them, which drew his attention to her legs. His eyes followed her around the apartment as she tried to pack her backpack. Miranda told Marcus that she would be home around 5.30 p.m. if he wanted to have dinner together. He barely heard the words she was saying as she sat down on the sofa, her skirt riding up even higher on her hips. She crossed her legs, resting her ankle on her knee to put on her shoe, giving Marcus a clear view of her upper thigh and the cotton gusset of her tights. He took one more look at her skirt as she put on her other shoe before running out the door. Marcus spent the day attending a couple of classes, then doing his homework and working on his job. He spent most of the day at the computer. When Miranda returned home, she was exhausted. It was not only a stressful weekend due to the move, but also an emotionally draining one as she ended a chapter in her life 
and began a new one. She kicked off her high heels and leaned back on the couch to relax. Miranda put her feet on the coffee table, which made Marcus angry, but he didn't say anything because he was hypnotized by Miranda's pantyhose-clad legs. Her skirt rode up on her legs, exposing her thighs. What he noticed was that the tights did not have reinforced toes, allowing him to clearly see her nails, which were painted a deep red. Miranda's calves were slender and her thigh muscles sculpted. In Marcus's opinion, his new roommate had perfect legs. From that day on, Marcus tried to make sure he was awake when Miranda was getting ready for work or at home when she got home. To begin with, she was a pretty young woman, but she looked even better with her hair and makeup done. Although her work outfit wasn't sexy, she still looked great and dressed professionally. This can also be attractive while remaining professional. A blouse with lace trim or a lace bra under a white blouse will always attract a man's attention. The more the roommates got used to each other, the more relaxed they became in each other's presence. Miranda became familiar with his quirks, and Marcus became more and more comfortable talking to a woman, and he was not as anxious as before. Miranda enjoyed living with Marcus because she didn't see him as a potential suitor, so she could also relax around him. There was no fear of romance between them, and they became friends. They often did things together, such as cooking dinner, going grocery shopping, and sometimes going to the movies together. Miranda almost forced Marcus to communicate more. When she went out with her friends, she invited him along. At first he refused, although deep down he wanted to go with her but his anxiety and shyness stopped him. However, time passed and Miranda eventually convinced him to come with her. One Friday night after a long week of work, she met friends for drinks and Marcus declined her invitation to join them. Miranda said to Marcus, Take your coat. I'm not going to let a single guy in his early twenties sit alone in his apartment on a Friday night. This is simply wrong. She saw that he was thinking about what to do and told him, Hurry up, let's go. If you're not having fun, just say you're not feeling well and you can leave. Marcus pouted like a hurt child, but did what Miranda told him and took his coat. The restaurant was a short walk from their apartment, and she knew Marcus was worried. So she tried to calm him down by telling him that he had already met Barb and her other friends were really nice. Miranda's friends had a booth off to the side, and she could feel Marcus tense as they approached them. But he tried to be better. For the first hour, Marcus was fairly silent and only spoke when Miranda tried to engage him in conversation. He has a very dry sense of humor, and after a couple of drinks, he made an unexpected comment that made everyone at the table laugh. He seemed to relax after that. It made him feel like he was part of the crowd. He seemed to enjoy the rest of the evening without much worry. On the way home, he admitted to Miranda that he had a good time and thanked her for the invitation. She was proud that she was able to help him come out of his shell for one evening. When they returned to the apartment, Marcus asked Miranda if she was going to go straight to bed. She took this as a hint that he wanted her to stay up, so she said she'd probably watch a little TV first. We could watch something together if you want. Of course, Marcus. I would still prefer to watch something in the living room on the big screen rather than on my laptop. But first I want to change clothes. Miranda felt more comfortable around Marcus and changed into a simple oversized pink nightgown with a V-neck that reached her mid-thigh. There was nothing sexy about it other than the fact that it was obvious she wasn't wearing a bra by the way her breasts swayed as she walked. Marcus was already sitting on the couch in his sweatpants and t-shirt. His eyes followed Miranda as she sat down on the opposite end of the couch. He noticed that her breasts were hugging her t-shirt and kept looking at her legs as she sat sideways with her feet tucked under her ass. Marcus was captivated by Miranda's beautiful face, warm smile, and deep blue eyes. He stole glances at her as they watched TV. It was only natural that he would secretly fall in love with his roommate. It became almost common for Marcus to join Miranda with her friends when they were in a group. Her friends were used to seeing them together and the way they interacted with each other. They began to wonder if there was something going on between them. Barb even asked Miranda about their relationship while they were shopping one day. You and Marcus seem to get along well. Yes, at first I was worried. He may be a little weird, but he doesn't come out of his shell often. You two seem very friendly. 
I think we've become pretty good friends. We have our moments where we argue about the dishes I leave in the sink and the fact that the bathroom is a little dirty, but everything turns out well. Okay, I'll stop beating around the bush. Is there anything romantic going on between you two? Miranda giggled and replied, No, nothing is happening between us. Trust me, we're just friends. Do you understand that when we're together, you only talk about Marcus? You cook dinner together every night. You go shopping together and you always go to the bar together. It sounds like there's something going on between you two. I can guarantee that nothing is happening. He's a nice guy and he looks good, but he's not my type. This is very bad. You both could use someone in your lives, Barb told her. I'm just not ready to date yet. Marcus and Miranda did develop a close friendship, but Miranda never considered that people might think there was more to their relationship. She became more and more comfortable living with Marcus, and as a result, she began to worry less about what she carried around the apartment. There were times when she wore a shorter nightgown that showed her panties or thong underneath, or her areola was slightly visible through her top. She never knew she was teasing Marcus. If she was making oatmeal for breakfast, the back of her nightgown would rise to the point of exposing her buttocks as she reached for the bowl from the top shelf of the cupboard. It was a fleeting revelation, but it did not escape Marcus. When Miranda did yoga, Marcus noticed the tight clothes she wore, especially when she did the downward-facing dog pose. Bending down, she stretched the fabric of her yoga pants until they revealed the panties she was wearing underneath. Miranda sometimes only put on a towel when she got out of the shower and made coffee before getting dressed. Although parts of her body were covered, Marcus found it, arousing the simple fact that she was naked underneath, although he hid it well. One morning, as Miranda was getting ready for work, she was partially dressed in the bathroom. She opened the door slightly to let steam from the shower out of the bathroom and clear the fog from the mirror. Marcus thought the bathroom was free and pushed the door open, only to see Miranda standing in front of the mirror, putting on makeup in her underwear. He swallowed hard, stunned by the sight of his scantily clad roommate. Marcus saw a good portion of Miranda's curvy breasts, her long bare legs, and her curvy ass. Miranda flinched when she saw Marcus and turned to face him. Marcus muttered an apology. I, 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 I'm sorry, and walked away, blushing. But he would never forget the sight of his roommate in her underwear. This didn't bother Miranda as much as Marcus thought it would, and she assured him that everything was fine. There was nothing special about it. He was comforted by her understanding. Miranda found it a little disturbing that Marcus had accidentally seen her partially undressed. She could tell by the way he was staring at her that he liked what he saw. Her self-confidence was shaken when her boyfriend cheated on her, and she felt she wasn't attractive enough to keep him from wandering off. After the incident in the bathroom, Miranda subconsciously became less concerned about covering her body in front of Marcus. She noticed that he especially liked to see her in pantyhose, so she didn't change immediately after coming home from work or always put them on when they went out with friends. One morning, when Miranda was getting dressed for work, she forgot her hairbrush in the bathroom and went to get it, wearing only a bra and pantyhose. To be honest, she didn't know Marcus was sitting at his computer desk, and she was startled when she saw him on her way back from the bathroom. Marcus's eyes widened, and he couldn't help but gawk as he saw the leggy, barefoot Miranda walking into the bathroom. Her legs looked amazing under the pantyhose, and she was naked underneath, so he got a good look at how her buttocks twitched as she walked. When she saw Marcus in the corner, she apologized, trying to cover herself with her hands. She decided it was best to hurry back to her bedroom. After work, Miranda met Barb for drinks. They got together every couple of weeks for happy hour and talked about what was going on in their lives. Once again, Miranda only talked about Marcus. Barb let her continue for a bit, but had to say something to her best friend. Every time we get together, the whole conversation revolves around Marcus. I think you like him more than you want to admit. No, we're just roommates. Yes, exactly. Barb's words struck a nerve in Miranda. Was it possible that she liked Marcus more than she thought? 
Barb told her that Marcus treated her better than any other guy she had dated before. She was used to dating more athletic bad boy types who never appreciated her and ended up cheating on her. Marcus cared for her, treated her well, and was a true gentleman. Yes, he was strange, but he was a nice person. They cooked food together, often talked and watched TV together. Barb finished by telling Miranda, you even sent him a text message telling him you'd be home late. Damn, you guys are acting like an old married couple. The ladies finished their drinks and went in different directions. Barb's words made Miranda think about her relationship with Marcus. Were they just roommates or was there more to it than she realized? She still didn't think she was ready for a relationship and thought maybe she should start dating again. Subconsciously, she was a little afraid that she was playing it safe by getting too close to Marcus, perhaps too close. When she got home, Marcus had dinner already prepared, something he often did. Over dinner, Miranda asked Marcus, You don't talk too much about the women in your life. Do you think there is anyone you would like to ask out on a date? Well, you know, anyone at school or work? There is one girl that I really like. I had a crush on her for a while, but she would never go out with me. Why not? You're a great guy, Marcus. Don't be so negative. I bet a lot of girls would like to go on a date with you. No, I do not think so. Come on, I'll help you find the courage to ask her out. Miranda had no idea about the fact that she was the object of Marcus's desires. He didn't know how to tell her and was afraid that she would refuse him and end up moving out. He found a comfort zone and did not like change in his life. However, he could not refuse Miranda and reluctantly agreed to let her guide him. Over the next two weeks, Miranda took Marcus shopping to update his wardrobe, got his hair done, bought a new pair of glasses, and he agreed to try contact lenses. She bought him some cologne as a gift. Miranda gave him advice on how to approach his potential date, ideas of where they could go, and asked him to make sure he complimented her outfit and the way she looked. She even teased him by saying that at the end of the evening, if she invited him to her house for coffee, it would actually mean that she wanted to have sex with him. This made him feel awkward, but he laughed at Miranda's statement. He told her, I will be happy if she agrees to go on a date. I don't want to tempt fate. I'd settle for a kiss goodnight. Hey, you never know. You're a nice guy, Marcus. You are smart, you are a gentleman, and you are a nice person. All you need is more self-confidence. Women like confident guys. Miranda helped Marcus make a plan to ask his mystery woman out on a date, and on the day he planned to ask her, Miranda was just as nervous for Marcus as he was. He had been so kind to her all these months that she wanted to return the favor. When Miranda returned home from work, she asked, Well, did you ask her out? What did she say? I haven't invited her yet. Why not? What are you waiting for? He shrugged and invited her to sit. Miranda could tell he was nervous, but she waited for Marcus to say something. I was trying to work up the courage to ask her out. I'm here to support you. You should call her now, and I will be there to help you if you get stuck. Marcus looked scared and said, but it won't work. Miranda smiled as if she had made a breakthrough. Then Marcus continued, Miranda, you and I have known each other for over six months now and I think we get along great with each other. I, uh, was wondering if you'd like to go out with me on Friday night. A stunned expression appeared on Miranda's face, and her mouth fell open. She was speechless. She had no idea that she could be the object of Marcus's affections. When she didn't respond immediately, Marcus tried to back down from his request for a date. Sorry, Miranda. I knew asking you out was a bad idea. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to date me. And he began to get up. No, wait. I had no idea, Marcus. I'm just surprised, that's all. Miranda thought about it for a few seconds and replied, Sure, why not? Yes, I'll go on a date with you. You're not just saying this to avoid hurting my feelings, are you? No, Marcus. You're a nice guy. I really like you. Things were awkward between Miranda and Marcus for the rest of the week. Marcus's deep secret was revealed, and it changed the dynamic of the relationship. It could get even more uncomfortable if one person wanted a relationship and the other didn't. On Thursday night, 
Miranda wanted to lighten the mood and told Marcus that she was worried that dating might ruin their friendship. And they both had to agree that it was just one date and they weren't looking forward to another. He readily agreed and decided that she was just dating him so as not to hurt his feelings. They were both nervous on Friday night. It was a strange situation since they both lived in the same apartment. Miranda showered first and retired to the bedroom to get dressed, while Marcus did the same. He put on one of the outfits that Miranda had chosen for him. I put in my contact lenses and put on a little cologne. He looked at himself in the mirror several times. Even after all the preparations, he was still too scared to leave his room. Miranda hadn't been on a date since she moved in with Marcus, so this was a big step for her, too. She decided to wear a flirty plaid pleated skirt and a halter top with lace trim. She thought Marcus liked her legs and pantyhose, so she made sure to wear nude tights and black heels. She pulled her hair into a ponytail and applied light makeup. She thought she looked cute, but not too sexy. Miranda stuck her head out of the bedroom door, calling out to Marcus, are you ready for me? I'm ready. When Miranda came out of her room, she spun around, and Marcus stood up, looked at her, and said, Wow, you look amazing. I like your hair in a ponytail. Thank you. You look great yourself. I like your new look, Marcus. You look very attractive. Miranda was impressed by the fact that Marcus had gone through all these changes in his lifestyle to impress her. She knew how hard it was for him, which made him strangely sexy. Marcus opened the door and walked Miranda to the taxi he had ordered, excited to be going on his first date in a long, long time. He opened the car door for his companion, which Miranda liked. No guy had ever held the door for her before. Marcus took her to a five-star restaurant where they enjoyed a delicious meal. The conversation started out a little awkward, but once they relaxed, it felt like a normal evening together, but it wasn't normal at all. They were both trying to figure out if there was more to their relationship than being roommates. At least they were both dating for the first time in months. It was a big step for both of them. After dinner, Marcus planned to take Miranda to a movie, but she suggested going to a bar for a drink instead. Marcus only wanted to please her and readily agreed. As they talked in the bar, Marcus continued to stare at Miranda's pantyhose-clad legs. She dangled one shoe on the tips of her toes, which did not go unnoticed by him. He couldn't believe he was on a real date with a gorgeous woman. Miranda found that being with Marcus on a formal date was better than she expected. He was very different from the guys she had dated before, but maybe she needed a change. Miranda actually found Marcus quite charming. He was also quite cute in his updated style. As they finished their first drink, Marcus asked if she wanted another. We could go home and have another drink or we could have coffee if you like. No, I can't drink coffee this late, otherwise I won't sleep all night. Miranda rolled her eyes and shook her head. It was like a light bulb went on in Marcus's head when he realized what she meant. Oh, uh, you mean, uh, you know? Yes, Marcus, I mean, you know. A smile appeared on his face, and he was completely bewildered by how their date would end. He agreed to go on a trip together, and they left the restaurant, Miranda holding his hand. Marcus was in all his glory. He was about to have sex with the girl he had been dreaming about for months. Miranda knew that Marcus was nervous, and realized that she would have to take the lead in what would happen that evening. On the way home, she snuggled close to him in the back seat of the car pressing her right breast against his shoulder. Marcus got out of the car first and helped Miranda out. When they reached their apartment and closed the door behind them, Miranda looked up at Marcus, staring into his eyes. He was confused, not knowing what she expected from him. After a few awkward seconds of silence, Miranda asked, Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, sorry. I didn't know what you expected from me. I don't go on dates very often, and I've always had a hard time knowing when I should kiss a girl. Should I ask first? I'm not very good at picking up hints. Oh, Marcus, just shut up and kiss me. Miranda pulled Marcus closer to her, tilting her head and closing her eyes as he leaned in. Their lips pressed softly against each other. Marcus finally had the moment he had dreamed of, but never believed he would ever have the opportunity to do. Kissing Miranda was even better than he had imagined. 
They kissed for a few seconds, pulled away from each other for a moment, then started kissing again, but this time for much longer. Miranda discovered that Marcus was a better kisser than she thought. There was an undeniable spark between them as they began a mini makeout session. As they released their embrace, Miranda looked down and saw Marcus's predicament. He placed his hands on his crotch and began to blush. Don't worry about it, I'm excited too. You can just see it. This is also a kind of compliment. Let's have another drink and sit on the couch before we do anything else. By this time, Marcus was willing to do anything Miranda asked to try and please her. He brought them both a glass of wine and joined her on the couch. It was obvious that he had no idea what to do next. So Miranda set her glass down, reached for his, and set it down as well. Marcus looked a little embarrassed. But then Miranda pulled him closer, and they started kissing again. They were kissing on the couch when Miranda took Marcus's hand and placed it on her chest. After several minutes of caressing, Miranda pulled away from their embrace and suggested, Let's go to the bedroom. Marcus was more than ready to take the next step, and took her hand and led her to his room. Once there, he helped her pull her top over her head and pulled her skirt down her legs. Miranda stood in front of him in her bra and pantyhose, and Marcus enjoyed the sight before him. He had seen his neighbor half-dressed before, and this had given him a strong desire to lay hands on her one day. And now, he had such a chance. Miranda began to undress further, but Marcus stopped her. He wanted to enjoy her just a little more for who she was. Miranda helped him undress and saw that he was better equipped than many of her gentlemen. They had amazingly wonderful sex. They decided to take a shower, have another drink, and see what happens next. They kissed each other under the running waiter of the shower. Their soapy hands slid over each other as they continued to explore their naked bodies. In his wildest dreams, Marcus never thought he could have a woman as sexy as Miranda. It was a night he would cherish for the rest of his life. Miranda was surprised at how slowly her attraction to Marcus grew over time. She was a hopeless romantic who thought she would find love at first sight. She wasn't sure where this was going, but she was going to enjoy the evening and figure it out later. When they finished showering, Miranda suggested they go back to the couch and have a cocktail before doing anything else. Marcus wasn't going to object to anything she wanted to do, but he had one request. Would you find it strange if I asked you to put on your tights again? Miranda smiled and replied, If that's what you want from me, then I'll go get them. Miranda knew that guys liked to look at her legs, and she liked to show them off too. She went to the bedroom to get her pantyhose and then slowly put on a show for Marcus. Marcus's gaze was drawn to Miranda's perfectly sculpted legs. His heart was beating wildly. Miranda then stood up, pulling her tights up to her knees, then to her waist. She leaned down to tug them further and pull them higher, and stood in front of Marcus to stand before him. Miranda saw the lust in his eyes. The more excited Marcus got, the more it turned Miranda on. She loved being his fantasy girl and having someone worship her body. He made her turn around so he could get a better look at her. Then she told him, Let's go back to the bedroom. This time it was very hard sex. Wow, you're great in bed, Marcus. It's a pity that I didn't find out about this earlier, Miranda said half-jokingly. I needed it, Marcus replied. You're even better than I imagined. You have no idea how long it's been since I've had sex. By the way, you owe me a pair of tights, Miranda joked. I'll buy you ten pairs if you want. They both lay in bed, naked, talking about random things in their lives, Marcus went for glasses and a bottle of wine. He told Miranda that she made him the happiest man in the world when she said she would go on a date with him, and he was even happier after having sex with her. Miranda told him how shocked she was when he asked her out. She said yes because she realized that no man had ever treated her as well as he did. Miranda also admitted that she felt a twinge of jealousy, thinking he was going to date someone else. She admitted that Marcus was better in bed than many of the guys she had been with. Marcus and Miranda ran their hands over each other's bodies, feeling their bare skin. Neither of them wanted the night to end. There was a moment of silence, and they naturally clung to each other and began to kiss again. The kisses turned into caresses, and Marcus began to get excited again. 
They made love slowly. They were both exhausted. Miranda fell asleep in his arms, feeling safe for the first time in months. The next morning, Miranda, still naked, tried to quietly leave Marcus's bed without waking him. But as she approached the door, she heard him ask, Where are you going? I need to go to the toilet. Marcus was concerned that Miranda might regret the sudden turn in their relationship. Dating was a big step for them, and having sex most of the night was something neither of them expected. Marcus lay in bed for a few minutes, wondering what he should say to Miranda. When he came out of his room, he found her in the kitchen making coffee. She was wearing one of her short nightgowns, and he stood watching her for a few moments, surprised by the fact that he had spent the night with her. Miranda was amazed when she first saw Marcus standing in the living room. Oh my God, you scared me. I made us coffee. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. She poured them both a cup of coffee and sat down in the dining area. Marcus didn't say much, so Miranda decided she needed to break the ice and talk about the night before. Last night was, uh, fun. I had a great time. Marcus was relieved to hear this and replied, Yeah, I had fun too. It was the best night of my life. I was happy to be on a date with you. And then, you know. You know, it was fun too, Miranda said with a smile and continued. We can say that we had sex. Three times. Does this mean you would go out with me again? Oh, I would definitely go out with you again, Marcus. A huge smile appeared on his face, as if he had won the lottery. Although Miranda had never considered Marcus as a potential boyfriend, there was no doubt that they got along surprisingly well as roommates. He was kind, considerate, and a gentleman. He treated her better than any of her ex-boyfriends. Plus, he was damn good in bed, which was shocking. But he was so meticulous. He was studying how to give a woman sexual pleasure, and he passed the test. As Marcus and Miranda sipped their morning cup of coffee, they continued to gaze into each other's eyes, both surprised by the sudden turn of events in their relationship and contemplating having sex three times. They decided to go have breakfast and do some shopping at the grocery store. As they rinsed their coffee cups, an atmosphere arose between them. Marcus asked Miranda, Can I kiss you again? His lack of experience and self-confidence was part of Marcus's charm, and Miranda told him, Marcus, sometimes you just have to go for it. Asking for permission takes away your spontaneity. I can't just walk up to someone and kiss them. Don't be stupid. You take her in your arms and look deep into her eyes. You should be able to tell how she feels by the look in her eyes. Marcus hugged her and looked deep into her eyes. Miranda smiled. Then Marcus smiled. He leaned down to kiss her. Their lips met as they closed their eyes. As they kissed, Marcus slid his hands down and grabbed Miranda's ass and pulled her closer. That Saturday, Marcus and Mirinda made love all day. Before dinner, Miranda asked Marcus what she should wear, and he asked her to wear his tight black yoga pants, the ones that hugged her ass and looked like they were painted on. She also wore a white-lined crop top without a bra and 10-inch black peep-toe heels that showed off the bounce of her bum as she walked. Marcus felt proud to walk into the restaurant next to Miranda. Most people probably couldn't believe they were together or thought they must be related, but she was his girlfriend. He himself found it difficult to believe that this was happening. While he wasn't the most handsome guy Miranda had ever dated or the man with the greatest physical attributes, he was a genuinely good man who idolized her and wanted to make her happy. He was surprisingly good in bed, too. Over dinner, they talked about mundane things, like how the apartment needed to be cleaned and that they both needed to do some laundry for the week ahead. They usually did this on Saturday, but most of the day they either ate or had sex. During afternoon cocktails, Miranda asked, So what do you want to do when we get home? Well, I have a couple of ideas. We could watch a movie or have some fun in the bedroom. I'm ready for some big fun in the bedroom. I have a surprise for you when we get home, Miranda said. Oh, really? What is this? If I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise. Marcus couldn't wait to get back to the apartment with Miranda. As soon as the door closed behind them, they began to kiss, but she pushed him away. Go open a bottle of wine, and I'll be right back with your surprise. 
I'll be right here waiting for you, baby. After a few minutes, Marcus wondered what happened to Miranda, and then he heard her shout, Close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you. Marcus closed his eyes and heard the familiar creak of Miranda's door opening and the sound of her high heels clicking on the wooden floor. He smelled her fresh perfume. He wanted to open his eyes but didn't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, now you can open your eyes. Marcus was waiting for these words, opened his eyes and exclaimed, Oh my God! Miranda stood before him in an opaque black leotard, a tiny red and black plaid skirt, and black open-toed heels. She completed the outfit by wearing her hair in braids. Her skirt didn't even cover her butt, and she wore bright red lipstick. She knew Marcus liked pantyhose and nylons, and figured he'd like her in stockings, and she was right. His eyes were wide open, his jaw dropped, and he looked like he could attack her at any moment. Miranda leaned over, resting her ass in his face, grabbed her drink, and sat down next to Marcus. When Marcus tried to touch Miranda's feet, she told him, Oh no, not yet. You can't touch me until I tell you it's okay. You're a tease, you know. Yes, I know, she answered with a grin. Miranda continued to parade in front of Marcus, bending and twisting to show off her sexy body in her lingerie. It drove him crazy, which was the whole point. The intensity of passions intensified even more when Miranda turned on the music and started dancing in front of Marcus. He wanted her even more than before. Miranda danced close enough to Marcus that he could see her body clearly, but far enough away that he couldn't touch her. Then they went to the bedroom and made love. Miranda fell asleep in Marcus's arms on the couch while they watched a movie. He didn't want to wake her up, so he let her sleep while they cuddled. As she lay on his chest, Marcus wondered how long this dream would last. It had been a great couple of days and nights with Miranda, and he was falling in love with her even more, but he wasn't sure if she would feel the same. When Miranda woke up, she apologized for falling asleep and said she was tired and wanted to go to bed. She staggered to her bedroom. Marcus desperately wanted to ask her if she wanted to sleep in his room for the night, but he didn't want to put too much pressure on Miranda. He knew he had to give her some space no matter how difficult it was, considering they lived together. The next morning, Marcus desperately wanted to talk to Miranda about their wild weekend, but she overslept. When she left her room, she told Marcus that she was meeting Barb for brunch and didn't know when she would be back. The insecure part of him thought she was brushing him off, while the logical part said that this was her normal behavior and he should relax. He still found it hard to believe that a woman as beautiful as Miranda would spend two days with him, having wild sex and hanging out with him. Only time will tell what will happen next. Miranda needed to talk about the last two days with Barb, her very best friend, with whom she shared all her deepest secrets. Barb hadn't heard from Miranda all weekend, which was unusual for her, and wondered what was going on. You won't believe what happened to me this weekend, Barb. Barb was confused and asked, Was it good or bad? I don't know. I think it's good. Okay, tell me what's going on. The unknown is killing me. I went on a date on Friday evening. No shit, it's time. Who is he? You wouldn't guess it in a million years. Was it Marcus? Miranda's jaw dropped and she asked, How did you know? I was just kidding. Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. We met on Friday and spent the day together yesterday. Get out of here, but honestly, it doesn't surprise me. You two act like you're already married. Heck, you even finish each other's sentences. Barb continued to ask, How many times a night? Miranda answered embarrassedly, Six times from Friday to yesterday. What the fuck, Miranda, six times? Happy for you, girl. I know he's a bit of a nerd, but I'm telling you, this guy knows how to please. Never. Miranda went on to explain how she and Marcus spent Friday night and most of Saturday afternoon having wild sex. Not only did they have sex, but it was the best thing she'd ever had. Barb was still in shock from her friend's revelation, but listened intently as Miranda went into detail about her dates and how she had fallen in love with Marcus. She was afraid to get involved with anyone for fear of getting hurt again. Barb shook her head and told Miranda, 
You just found a guy who worships you, cooks for you, treats you like a queen. What else do you want? I know, but he can be a bit of a jerk sometimes. Yes, but he's adorable, Miranda. You're right. He may be a jerk, but he's charming. Barb agreed. Exactly. He's charming. They both burst out laughing, and Miranda thanked Barb for helping her think things through. While Miranda was hanging out with Barb, Marcus met with Alex and told him everything that happened with Miranda. Alex high-fived his best friend for sleeping with a gorgeous woman. Marcus explained that there was more to it than that. He had deep feelings for Miranda and didn't know what to do. Alex told him that he overthinks situations and just takes things on faith and sees what happens. Alex told him to take it every day and enjoy the sex they had. Over the next few weeks, Miranda and Marcus agreed that they would continue dating and see where their relationship went. But they each needed to give the other their own space. It was weird dating someone you live with. They continued to have sex two to three times a week, and Miranda sometimes slept in Marcus's bed. One evening, Miranda and Marcus were having a casual dinner before heading out to a party when they ran into her ex-boyfriend. Marcus beamed with pride as she introduced him as her boyfriend. An insecure part of him then wondered if Miranda was just trying to make her ex jealous. He waited until dinner was over and asked her, Am I really your boyfriend? What? You introduced me as your boyfriend. You are my girlfriend? Do you want me to be your girlfriend? Hell yes. Nothing would make me happier. Well then, I guess you're my boyfriend and I'm your girlfriend. Marcus beamed with pride. At the party, Marcus made sure everyone knew that the most beautiful woman in the room was his girlfriend. They even changed their social media profiles to in a relationship. That night, they made tender, passionate love. And from that night, Miranda and Marcus slept in the same bed, like most couples. On the one-year anniversary of Miranda moving in with Marcus, they went out to dinner to celebrate. Just before dessert was served, Marcus got down on one knee and proposed to Miranda. Tears streamed down Miranda's face and she replied, Yes, Marcus. Yes, I will marry you. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.